Hello, for just $5 a month, you can uh, support us on patreon.com slash gamegrumps, and you will have a good ga goofy gamer time. It's blank. <laughs> There's nothing there. These are all blank. <laughs> You're just making weird stuff up. Why don't you want to have good goofy gamer time? I kind of do, to be honest with you. Patreon.com slash gamegrumps. We'll have a fun, goofy gamer time. It's asterisk, not guaranteed. <laughs> yeah, actually, double asterisk, unlikely. <laughs> Last time on Game Grubs. The drama does not respond. Oh, unbelievable. Okay, so the drummer still doesn't give a rat's ass about me. An evil eye is upon you. If I ever opened up a fortune cookie and it said an evil eye is upon you, I would freak the f*** out. <laughs> Gabriel's passing out. Fireflies. I thought it was interesting. Gabriel, get in. Can't. It's too small for me. Oh my god. Sorry. I was having the nicest dream. Hey, I'm Dan. I'm also Dan. Dan. Well, hello there, and welcome to our fourth part in our continuing series of Gabriel Knight's Sins of the Father. Um, we are currently uh, at Tulane University in New Orleans, um, talking to Professor Hartridge. And uh, yeah, let's just get down to business. He just gave a lecture that we fell asleep in, so uh, he's very annoyed at Gabriel. What else can you tell me about New Orleans? The Catholic Church has always dominated in New Orleans, and its imagery in turn has dominated New Orleans voodoo. What can you tell me about St. John's Eve? It's June 23rd, the feast day of St. John the Baptist. But June 23rd has been a sacred day since the earliest times. Ancient sun worshippers used to roll a flaming wheel down a hill to celebrate the sun's descent on that day. A burning wheel? Huh. Ah, Cabri saint -Cour. Do you know what Cabri saint means? Cabri saint -Cour? Yes, I do. It's a Haitian term, I believe. It's French, and literally translates as goat without horns. As in a female goat? No as in a human sacrifice. Oh, good. Sacrifices in voodoo are usually of the animal variety. Chickens, bulls, goats. If the gods demand a goat without horns, it means a human being. Remember, that's what Willie uh, in the voodoo shop said under his breath um, when we asked him about the voodoo murders. So he knows something. Do you know anything about animal masks? As I said in my lecture, which I assume you actually listened to, is that animal masks, totems, are used extensively in most African voodoo religions. Do you know anything about veves? If you'd taken notes during my lecture, you wouldn't have to ask. Damn, he's really not gonna let that go. Do you know anything about Marie Laveau? While I find the colloquial bastardizations of voodoo somewhat interesting, from a sheerly intellectual point of view, there's not a lot of relation between people like Laveau and true voodoo practices. Tell me about Dambala. Dambala is one of the major Rada Loire, also known as Dambala Wado. He is an ancient Dahomean rain god, often represented as a large boa constrictor. Dambala is the most powerful and most violent of the Rada Loa. The Rada Loa are typically benevolent, as opposed, say, to the Patro Loa. He is still worshipped heavily in Haiti, and when voodoo first started in New Orleans, the early conclaves were reportedly based on the worship of the great zombie, the great serpent, Dambala. Oh, man, it's so interesting. Like, it's such, it's such its own universe that, like, I had no idea about. Uh, growing up, I wish um, I wish schools would make kids play this game so they could learn about voodoo. Tell me about Ogun Badagri. Ogun Badagri is one of the Patrolawa. The Patrolawa are much more violent than the Radalawa. 
Some people believe the Petroloir originated in Haiti, but I have found some evidence that the Petroloir were African as well, though worshipped only by a small Voodoo tribe, and a very bloody one. Tell me about yourself. All right, Mr. Knight. I'm 35, a fully tenured professor at this university, as well as a fellow at Cambridge. My doctorate was obtained at Syracuse. Yes, Syracuse, in religious studies. I'm an agnostic, but I find human belief systems fascinating. I specialize in African religions because I grew up there. My father was a Protestant missionary. And I am heterosexual when I practice sex at all, which isn't very often. Any other questions? Oh, uh, no. Fine. He seems like a relaxed guy. Tell me more about human sacrifice. It's very rare. Most voodoo practices do not include human sacrifice as a matter of record, but it is theoretically possible, if that's what the gods demand. For example, one of the chants I had translated for me from a Haitian ritual went like this. Mistress Ezuli, come and aid us. If a cock is demanded, we will give it. If a bull will suffice, behold it. But if a goat without horns is required for sacrifice, oh, where will we find one? Ezuli is the gentlest of Loire, so they call on her for mercy. But I have seen grown and powerful Hongan tremble before possession by one of the more violent Loire, such as Papa Nebo. Clearly, they are afraid that something of the sort will be ordered or that Loire will simply take it for themselves. All right, in that case, looks like we should show him some of the stuff we've found. Uh, perhaps the murder photo. Is there anything you can tell me about the voodoo aspects of this photograph? This is a serious voodoo ritual. Nasty stuff. In what way? Let's see. I can't make out much detail from this photograph, except for the corpse, of course. But the wound, the face, and what little I can see of the ritual paraphernalia, hmm. It reminds me of certain black voodoo practices. Very rare. I've never witnessed them myself, you understand. Really? Interesting. Thanks. Maybe you just don't know how to party. I should definitely show him the veve. Can you tell me anything about this? Wow. Interesting. Very interesting. Mind if I copy this? Be my guest. Great. I'll be right back. Here you go. You know, this is a fascinating veve. You must tell me all about its origin. Actually, I was hoping you'd tell me. Can you figure out anything about it from the symbols? Well, some. That's why I wanted a copy. I want to research the design myself. Have you heard of the voodoo murders? No. You're kidding. Really? Then the voodoo is authentic. The newspapers are wrong. Boy, are they wrong. You think this uh, veve is authentic? Authentic? Mr. Knight, that's like asking if the Mona Lisa is a painting. Oh, shit. Tell you what, I'll look into these symbols myself and see what I can learn about the sect that made this. I'll give you a call when I have more information. Uh, you are associated with the police, aren't you? Absolutely. Uh, but I'm undercover. You can contact me at St. George's Bookshop in the quarter. Oh, right. Gabriel. Now, I'd like to get started on this, if you don't mind. All right. He likes us a little more now. Time to hit the road. Let's see. Back to the French Quarter. Let's take a little trip over to the St. Louis Cathedral. Well, this is lovely. At least the cherub is an aesthetic way of asking for donations.
The chancel of St. Louis Cathedral consists of a raised dais, an altar, two pedestals, and a choir area. Pews. Remember, kids, he who farts in church sits in his own pew. Rows of pews line each side of Deneve's aisle. My friend Joe's uncle told us that joke when we were ten, and it was the funniest thing I'd ever heard in my life. Let's do some confessing, shall we? Someone is in that confessional. Gabriel will have to wait. Son of a bitch. Curtain confessionals are a subtle, old-fashioned presence on the left of the nave. There's a small shelf under the meshed window. This is very strange. I don't know. I don't know if this is how confessionals usually look. I am, I'm Jewish, so I've never been to one. A padded bench provides a soft place for supplicating knees. There's a knot hole. There's a knot hole about the size of a quarter in the wood paneling on that wall. A meshed window provides access to the confessional from the priest's booth. The panel behind the mesh window moves from the other side. May I help you, my child? Could you give me a blessing? Do you feel the need for a blessing? You wouldn't believe me if I told you. All right, if it will comfort you. The priest blesses Gabriel through the confessional window. Peace be with you, son. Thank you, Father. Is there anything else? Can I ask you a few questions? The confessional is not the best place for interviews, son. You can contact the parish offices if you need private counseling. I understand. Thanks, Father. Is there anything else? I'd like to make a confession. All right. If it'll make you feel better. Wow, so many. Um... I... Impure Oop. thoughts? You mean thoughts of sexual relations? You could say that, but uh, worse than what you mean. Worse? You mean extreme sexual relations? Well, not involving animals or anything. Oh, well. <laughs> Perhaps we should just leave it at that. Pray for forgiveness and say ten rosaries. Is there anything else? I've done some pretty rotten things to my friend Mosley. Rotten? What do you mean? Practical jokes, insults, uh, among other things. I see. Are you sorry? Well... Mm. Pray for forgiveness and say three rosaries. Is there anything else? I haven't paid my assistant for three months. Have you had the money? Nope. Sounds like a matter for the courts, son. <laughs> Not the church. Is there anything else? Luckily, Grace is cool. Some people say I'm a selfish person, Father. We can always strive to improve ourselves. Patterns can be broken. Yes. Thank you, Father. Is there anything else? I think I just need to give an overall apology to the universe. I see. Apology noted. Thanks, Father. Is there anything else? I've had a lot of women, Father. A lot? More than ten? Yes, Father. More than 20? Yes, Father. More than 40? <clears throat> yes, Father. Son, I don't think this is a matter for a priest. I think you need a good therapist. If we're counting therapists, then I'm up to at least, uh, let's see here, count of the one, and uh, <laughs> this might take a while. My son, I'm afraid my lunch break is coming on about now. Pray for forgiveness and say 20 rosaries. On second thought, when you finish the math, say that many rosaries. Gabriel hears him leave the confessional. I should probably add one more rosary for that while I'm at it. I've been a bad boy. 
Boy, you know, you know you've done some fucking up in your life when the priest is like, ah, I gotta take a lunch. The knothole doesn't seem to operate that way. The knothole is part of the paneling. There's a knothole about the size of a quarter in the wood paneling on that wall. Hmm. Okay. I guess it's time to leave. And now that the priest is gone, time to go I've into where he was. The half lives. Now that Gabriel's confessed to some sins, it's time to do some more sinning. There's a box under the shelf of the priest's confessional. Inside the box, Gabriel finds a priest collar and some oil used for blessing. Okay. You never know when a priest collar will come in handy. Inside the box is some oil used for blessing. That oil is for holy purposes, not the sort of thing Gabriel would want to use it for. Hmm. I do feel like there's something that I should do with it. Maybe not, though. Okay. So I guess... Yeah. Cool. I guess we're good. Thank you, priest. He hears someone enter and kneel down on the other side. Oops. Father, I'd like to make a confession. Uh... Go on, my son. <laughs> I've recently come into a large sum of money. I don't really see a problem with that. It's not that. It's how I got it. I literally found a suitcase of money. So I picked it up and took it, instead of telling the police or trying to find who it belonged to. Hmm. Give it up to charity. Of course. Why didn't I think of that? Thanks, Father. The man leaves the confessional. Now I can say I did one good deed today. Good job, Gabriel. All right. Time to head out of here. And now, that takes us back into the square. And it is time for a little disguise. Over to the Canazo residence. Let's see. She seemed friendly over the phone. Yes? Who is it? Let's see. Try pet supply salesman. I've got some great pet supplies. Uh, coochie coochie coo, little doggy. Castro has everything he needs. Don't you, Castro? <laughs> Thanks a lot, Castro. Okay, so here is the sneakiness. She is uh, a very religious lady, um, deeply into voodoo and Catholicism. Um, well, I'm not sure if it's specifically Catholicism, but Christianity. So it is time to create a little disguise. We will combine the black shirt with the collar. And then Put that on. This disguise is almost ready. I hate to say it, but I need to style my hair to be more respectable. Okay, much to Gabriel's disgust, 
We're going to need to use that hair gel that we picked up in the bathroom much earlier. I don't think hair gel alone is going to convince her I'm the respectable type. Oh, maybe I have to combine all of them. Okay, the hair gel with the collar and shirt. There we go. And now you've got a priest disguise. All right, but this is private. Yeah, much more respectable. Some high-waisted 90s jeans. Marvelous. Yes? Who is it? Good thing she's farsighted. It's Father McLaughlin to see you. Father McLaughlin, you say? Hmm. You must be new in the parish. I'm so pleased to meet you, Father. Do come in. Thank you, my child. That took me forever to figure Please out when I was a kid. That, Father. Thank you. Now, what can I do for you? Well, first I'm going to look around at all of your stuff. It's a painting of a pretty young lady in old-fashioned clothes. Madame Casano looks fragile and pale under a thick layer of face powder. If Gabriel's not mistaken, she's a sly shot of a loaf. Harsh. Castro, cute as a flea on a piece of fruit. <laughs> the painting behind the couch is a Madonna and child. What a lovely tea set. The tea service has been polished recently. Madame uses it with her Creole sisters, perhaps. Okay, there's a jewelry box here that probably will come into play. There's an old-fashioned jewelry box on the coffee table. A low wooden coffee table sits in front of the sofa. The sofa is velvet, and it is wearing nearly as much of Madame Casano's face powder as Madame is herself. It's a banging couch, man. I party on that. Madam's parlor is full of carefully dusted and polished relics of her past. It's a large antique cabinet. It's probably worth something. Madam seems to like candles. Gabriel wonders if these two are specialties of Mr. Walker's shop. All right. Let me just, oops, plant and lamp. An old table lamp with a fringe shade gives off what little light there is in the parlor. The plant looks healthy, despite Gabriel's vague impression that Castro makes great use of it. Let's talk to Castro first. Nice doggy. Good Castro. <laughs> what a little bastard of a dog. <laughs> Do you mind if I ask you a few questions, my child? Of course not, mon père. What can you tell me about voodoo? People think I'm just a foolish old woman, but I know the things they do. My family's been in New Orleans since 1750, so I know more than most. Voodoo people are all over the city, in the shops, everywhere. They'll curse you like that. And most people don't even notice. Spit on your bread at the bakery. Take strands of your hair at the store when you try on clothes. Oh, you have to be so careful. But I know their ways, so I can protect myself. I know how to use the magic, too. And I can counteract their evil spells. One of the things I like about this game is the way that the people who would come across as quote-unquote crazy are the ones that are actually right about what's going on in the world. What can you tell me about New Orleans? The only true New Orleans are of French origin, you know? My family were among the original settlers of New Orleans. They came here from France. The Creole society used to be so gay in New Orleans. Now it barely hangs on by its fingernails. Do you know anything about snakes? 
Snakes. They're evil creatures. Did you know that evil people can send them into your dreams? They can. That's why I never sleep. Right. Thanks. Keep in mind that she's talking to someone who dreams horribly about snakes every night. All right, time to ask this nice old lady about human sacrifices. Do you have any idea what Capri San Carl means? Maybe I know. I bet you do not know, Fazer, net pa. Hmm. I think I'll play it dumb. It means don't eat the chili. <laughs> Shows how much you know. Oh, I guess I was wrong. About Cabri Sankar. We? Oui? Are you going to tell me what it means, Fazer? It means goat without horns. Fazer, you surprised me. You do know what it means. You know what they mean by goat without horns, don't you? A human being. That's right. Slit your throat, cut out your heart. Pure evil murder. Oh, good. Do you know anything about Marie Laveau? Oh, hair. I could tell you about hair. Voodoo queen? Ah! My great-grandmother was an acolyte of Marie Laveau. She knows the truth about her. Tell me the truth. Tell me more about Marie Laveau. She was only a front for the real evildoers, Father. And that's the truth about Marie Laveau. Do you know anything about animal masks? No, Father. I don't know anything about that. Do you know anything about Vevis? No, Father. I don't know anything about that. Do you know anything about black voodoo? Oh, yes, Father. It is the wickedest kind. The kind they practice here in New Orleans. Oh, good. What can you tell me about St. John's Eve? Oh, St. John's Eve, Merwi. I used to love the St. John's Eve Mass at St. Louis Cathedral. Of course, it is also a night of great wickedness, worse than All Hallows' Eve. They will corrupt anything, Father. They? They who? Oh, you know. I don't know. Have you ever heard of Dambala? No, Father. I don't know anything about that. Does the name Ogun Badagri mean anything to you? No, Father. I don't know anything about that. Boy, she really knows her stuff or has no idea. Do you know anything about human sacrifice here in New Orleans? Well, my great grandma there could tell stories. She saw it. People say that sort of thing wasn't done in New Orleans. But the real voodoo queens did it. Oh, yes. Who are the real voodoo queens? Well, my great grandmother told me that Lavo was just a one, a flamboyant decoy. She distracted authorities from the real voodoo queen of New Orleans. It's been the same one for almost 200 years. She's head of a secret voodoo enfant. That's what they call their temples, you know. It's so secret. Most of the voodoo people in the city don't even know about it. The real voodoo queen controlled Lavo, gave her a little bit of power, and used her like a puppet. Boy, it's so surreal to sneak into this woman's house dressed as a priest and then ask her all about voodoo murders. You know, nice little Thursday. Tell me more about this secret voodoo hound for. Well, I've never seen it. I wouldn't go near it if you bade me. But it's here in New Orleans, I guarantee it. I hear their drums at night, oh yes. That's why I'm so ill, I tell you, those drums. But we shouldn't talk about it. They'll hear us. It's the devil's work that happens there, I can tell you. I'll show you something, something secret. You mustn't tell anyone, Father. I swear on my collar. Here it is, mon père. A true object of evil if ever there was one. It radiates something, all right. It belonged to my great-grandmother. 
She told my master that it was a token to gain entrance to the real voodoo ceremonies. You don't say. To tell you the truth, I've always felt nervous about having it in the house. You know, evil influence and all. I can see how you would, yes. And yet, I could never part with it. It's been in the family for generations. Would you bless it for me, father? I feel strange asking such a thing of you, but surely you understand. I'll do better than bless it. Bless this bracelet of a snake. Even though its vibes aren't great, <sighs> let it do nobody harm when they wear it on their arm. Voodoo spirits, go away. Don't come back another day. And now let us pray. It's a bracelet in the shape of a snake. Hmm. I wonder if I can make an impression of it using the clay. Gabriel has a thought about the clay. Bless, oh bless this circlet of silver. Take the curse, oh take it, Wilbur. <laughs> a lovely blessing, mon père. Yes, I think it made a lasting impression. Here you go. I feel so much better now. Nice. Okay. Let's see if we've missed anything here. I think we've got most of it. What do you know about the voodoo murders? Voodoo murders? Ha! They are nothing new to me, Fazia. They happen all the time. I hardly go out anymore. It's too dangerous in the streets. They can get you anywhere, you know. Even here, in this room. But I try not to let them know about me. That's the best way. Stay off the Tell grid. Tell more about voodoo in New Orleans. It's just plain evil. It's dangerous to even discuss it. Tell me about yourself. Me? I am Creole. My family has been in New Orleans for over 200 years. Real New Orleanians are French, you see. These days, the city is overrun with people with no heritage at all. No offense, Fazer, but it's true. But the French naturellement will always be the true blood of New Orleans. Cool. That's my cue. All right, let's see. Madam finds comfort in these iconic images, it seems. Bless you, my child. Bless you, Father McLaughlin. All right. Today, I pretended to be a priest. And I stole an old woman's bracelet mold. Okay, I guess maybe I'll just... I'm not going back on the street looking like this. Okay, there it is. It does it automatically. Okay, cool. I think it is time for a little trip back to the drugstore. Now that we've met Willie's client and talked to her. Hi. Mm-hmm. <laughs> what a charmer. Can I ask you just a few more questions? Pfft, whatever, man. Do you know anything about a secret voodoo houndfall? <laughs> There's no such thing. Not around here. There definitely is. I found out what Cabri Sankal means. How did you know about human sacrifice? I never said them words, monsieur. You must have heard them from someone else. Do you know anything about black voodoo? Black voodoo? No such thing, I'll tell you for sure. 
Does the name Ogun Badagri mean anything to you? Don't talk like that around here, man. What a mix of, I don't know what you're talking about, and shut the fuck up. Do you know anything about Veves? Like the ones in the voodoo rituals they do for the tourists? Right. They curiosities, no? This a curio shop. Oh yeah, I keep forgetting. Have you ever heard of Dambala? Dambala is an African legend about a great serpent. Folklore, that's all. Would you take 50 for Willie Jr.? Don't insult me, monsieur. The price is $120. What? <laughs> you miss Okay. Cool, got some updates. I like a man with a, a sternum behind his desk. You know he means business. Okay, gonna head to the cemetery. There's my boy Toussaint. But today we are going. I don't need this to go way. visit the family tomb. Oops. Going this way. And there's Malia. Malia? Mr. Knight, what are you doing here? Um, uh, my family's tomb is here. Mine too. Unnoticed. Subtle. Well, Mr. Knight, if there's nothing else. Don't go. I need to talk to you. Whatever for? I can't stop thinking about you. I've been in your thoughts too. I can see it in your eyes. Mr. Knight, you don't know anything about me. I'm not in a position to get involved. I've said that a million times myself, but this is different. I think we both know we can't fight it. <laughs> oh, I can't believe I'm saying this. I have so many obligations. My family is very traditional. You wouldn't understand. Hey, I love tradition. I've seen Fiddler on the Roof a hundred times. <laughs> this isn't a musical, Mr. Knight. We live in different worlds. Look, I know you got more money than God. Do you think I care? Do you think that's why I'm saying this? No, I don't. Why don't you come see my world? I've got a little bookshop, St. George's on Bourbon. I know. See, I knew it. You're crazy about me too. Come by tonight, please. My world isn't so bad. I'm sorry, but there's no place for someone like you in my life. Not now, not ever. Damn it. Just another budding graveyard romance goes by the wayside. Very sad. Well, as you can see, the sky's getting a little dark, so... Maybe we'll just head back to the bookstore. It's getting late. Gabriel decides to go home for the day. Whoa. Excuse me. I'm going inside. Oh? I'm afraid St. George's is closed for the day. I'm not a customer. I'm here to see the owner. Why don't you just leave your name and number with me, and I'll tell him you stopped by. Listen, if Gabriel is here, he'll want to see me. Is he? Here? I really couldn't say for certain, but in the morning... Gracie, say goodnight. Uh. Oh, she super likes him. You came. I didn't think you would. I didn't think I would either. Your eyes. Mmm. Uh, I, I could show you around a little. It's it's not much, but... Uh... Please don't. I couldn't focus on much of anything right now. Yeah, no. God, what is it about you? Just shut up and kiss me. If there was a studio audience, they'd be like, ooh, right now. So night three was a pretty wild one. I spoke to one who smelled of death. He gave me to his ears, and crosses that were marked were made into a veil of tears. Hmm. 
Man. Gone before the morning paper. Okay, there's a dude outside now. That's unsettling. Things are getting weird on day four. You're not speaking to me this morning? Don't be silly. I just have nothing to say. Have it your way. Okay, Gracie's upset. Have you noticed this guy outside the shop? Yeah, he gives me the creeps. I wish he'd go away. Let's, uh, go ahead and talk to him. Gabriel watches the man watching the shop. Get the hell out of here. The figure outside does not respond. Okay, very relaxing. Let's talk to Gracie a little bit. Got a minute, Grace? What's up? Do you have messages for me? Your grandmother called. She said to remind you to stop by and go through your father's things. Hmm, okay. I will do that. Okay. Let's see if there are any other messages. Do you have messages for me? That man from Germany called again, Wolfgang Ritter. Now he's claiming to be a relative of yours. Interesting. All right, let's get Wolfgang Ritter's number. Can I get that phone number for Wolfgang Ritter? Sure, I'll give it to you when we're done talking. Great. Could you do some research for me? Sure, what? Research this pattern, please. I have a pattern I need you to research. How interesting. What is it? It's a reconstruction of the tracings they found around the murder victims. The ones done in flower and blood. Yuck! You shouldn't carry this kind of thing around. Who knows what these symbols mean? Well, wear your evil banishing gloves if you want, but check it out for me, would you? I'll see what I can find out. Anything else? I can't think of anything. All right. Here's that phone number. Thanks. Okay, so that is Wolfgang Ritter's phone number from Germany. Uh, I'll give him a call at some point. Today's newspaper is on the... Whoops. Let's see what's going on in the world. I believe this is June 21st. Time stated June 21st, 1993. Gabriel's eye is immediately drawn to an article about the voodoo murders. He scans it quickly. I don't believe this. They've closed the case. What case? The voodoo murders case. The paper says that the police have learned that the murders were a result of an underworld cartel war and that the war is over. That's not good? It's ridiculous. And what about the killers? And the voodoo angle, they never got anything on that. I know you were into it, Gabriel, but if it's over, that's hardly a negative. Anyway, if you're that upset, why don't you talk it over with your pal Mosley? You don't get it, Grace. Just forget it, okay? Gabriel decides to check his horoscope, despite his disgust. Death walks close to you today. Resist temptation lest his eye fall on you, too. Peachy. Gabriel also spots an ad for Sam Springleton, a jeweler. Sam hangs out at the Napoleon house. Okay, that's good to know. Especially since we just made a cast of a golden bracelet that could possibly uh, be reproduced by a master jeweler. So, case closed. Verder mo <laughs> Verder. Voodoo murder solved. 
The so-called Verdu Oh man, that's so tough for me. The so-called voodoo murders are over at last, says Detective Franklin Mosley of the New Orleans Police Department. Our investigation has turned up that these murders were the result of an underworld drug cartel war, said Mosley at a press conference yesterday evening. That war has now ended, and the people of this great city are safe again. The police say they are doubling efforts to crack down on the underworld drug trade that briefly turned New Orleans into its private battleground. Okay, and my horoscope said death walks closely, and I wonder if that has to do with the extremely intimidating, terrifying man standing outside of the shop. Okay, let's see. I guess, I guess it's probably safe to leave Grace with a man staring outside the shop. What could possibly go wrong? I'm out of here. Try not to sell out the store while I'm gone. Uh-huh. <laughs> okay, now it is time so we could go to the Napoleon house. But before that, I'm going to go to my grandma's house, Grandma Knight, because she actually is waiting for us. Ugh, oh, I love her. She's the sweetest. Gabriel, I'm so glad you stopped by. Oh, sorry it's been a while, Grandma. Not at all. <laughs> Give me a kiss. Now, come on, sit down. Tell me how you're doing. Nice bong, Grandma. How have you been, Gran? Just fine, dear. I'm sorry I bothered you at work, but, um, I was hoping you'd get a chance to go through your father's things in the attic. Don't be silly. You can call me anytime. Actually, before we get into Oh, this, nothing. Never mind. All right, dear. Let's take a peek at what's going on in the house. The sofa has a worn blue chintz pattern that Gabriel remembers fondly. Grand's knitting. She whips through that stuff like there was no tomorrow. Grand has a way with plants and kids. Underwall are portraits of Grand and Granddad when they were young. Gabriel's inherited some good looking jeans. Grandmother Knight rarely uses the fireplace these days. Too much of a hassle to clean. Mostly pictures of Gabriel, his dad, and Harrison Knight. Granny likes soft lighting. Man, there's so many little touches in this game that really, like, tell you a lot about the characters. I love it. Fresh carnations, Granny's favorite. That clock has been in the Wright family, Granny's family, for centuries. Gabriel grew up in this room. Just being here makes him feel safe. And after about five minutes, claustrophobic. Okay, guess it's time to talk to Grandma. That's my gran, adorable as always. Oh, you're such a tease. Can we talk, Gran? Of course, my boy. How can I help? What can you tell me about voodoo? Voodoo? What an odd question, Gabriel. Of course, you always were interested in monster movies and all that other weird stuff. You get that from your father and granddad. I don't know anything about it, dear. Of course, it was very big in New Orleans at one time, but you don't hear so much about it these days. Too much else in the world to worry about, I guess. Well, I'm into some weird shit, Grandma. What can you tell me about the voodoo murders? 
Oh, Gabriel, nothing. And I don't want to. I sometimes wonder what this world is coming to. What can you tell me about Nolens? Nolens is very southern, of course. Though not as much as it used to be when I was a girl. It's gotten much more influenced by the East Coast and that California stuff. Still, it hasn't changed as much as other places, I reckon. We've always been happy here. Have you ever heard of Marie Laveau? Marie Laveau? Oh, of course. She was that voodoo woman, wasn't she? She preyed on people's fears and superstitions, is what I think. There are always those willing to take other people's money for nothing. You stay away from people like that, Gabriel. <laughs> yes, Graham. I definitely won't sleep with someone who might be related to her an hour ago. Do you know anything about snakes? Snakes? What kind of snakes, dear? Oh, I don't know. Local kinds. Well, we used to get cotton mouths in the park when I was a girl, but I haven't heard of one being sighted for years. Milk snakes and garter snakes are also around these parts, but they can't hurt you. Thanks, Graham. Do you know anything about animal masks? Why, no, dear. Do you mean Mardi Gras masks? Uh, never mind, Graham. Can you tell me anything about a secret voodoo houndfall? Gabriel, my goodness. What are you up to these days? Oh, nothing, Graham, really. You better not be. You know you're the only family I have left. I know, Graham. It's okay. I swear, next time I go to New Orleans, I'm just going to walk around and ask people, like, do you know about a secret voodoo houndfall? I'm sure that'll go over well. Do you know anything about black voodoo? I don't know much about any kind of voodoo, Gabriel. What can you tell me about St. John's Eve? St. John's Eve? Hmm. I remember when I was a girl, we always had a St. John's Eve mass. The mass was said at midnight, and we held candles. One time on the way home, we were waylaid by a large group of drunken revelers. They didn't hurt us, but, oh, I was frightened. My father was furious. We never went to St. John's Eve Mass after that. Maybe a little bit more? What can you tell me about St. John's Eve? I haven't celebrated it in years, Gabriel. I'm sure there's still Mass in the more traditional churches, but I don't go. Okay, I'm gonna ask my grandma about human sacrifice. I'm sure that'll go over well. Does the phrase Cabri San Cole mean anything to you? Hmm, something without something, I think. Oh, my French is so rusty, I swear my mind is going. No, it's okay, thanks. Does the name Ogun Badakri mean anything to you? What, dear? Never mind. Have you ever heard of Dambala? What, dear? Never mind. This is going well. Tell me about yourself. Me? Surely you have something more interesting to talk about. No, come on, Gran. Oh, all right, dear. What do you want to hear? What do you do all day? You know how I love to knit and work in my garden. I also take long walks. It's the only way to keep an old body like mine from stiffening up. You're not old. Oh, don't be foolish. I'm older than the hell. I love his grandma. Tell me about before you met Granddaddy. Well, you know I was born Rebecca Wright. My daddy owned a lot of land outside of town. We grew peas and corn and cotton, all kinds of things. It was a good childhood, but my father was very strict. He didn't much let me out of his sight. Tell me how you met Granddaddy. Oh, I met Helson at a church revival. There was a traveling preacher back then, a big fella named Reverend Jim. I even remember his slogan, 
Come to me to find your way. Your granddad was sitting right behind me and my girlfriend, Alma. And at one point, old Reverend Jim was flinging his hair around with his fine brimstone annex. And a piece of it, one of those small add-on dues for men, went flying off. <laughs> oh, I swear, Helson and I were the only ones that noticed. We both started laughing to beat the band. Everyone looked at us like we were a couple of loonies. <laughs> oh, it was then I knew that he was for me. How you feeling these days? Fit as a fiddle, and don't you worry your head about it. Just tell me anything at all. I had your father when I was 22. The doctors told me I couldn't have any more after him, so I'm afraid I spoiled him rotten. Oh, nothing. Never mind. All right, dear. Tell me about our family. Who would you like to hear about? Your granddad, your father, or your mother? Tell me something about granddad. Your granddad immigrated to America when he was 21. He walked his way through school, met and married me, and we had your father, Philip. Tell me about my father. Your father was my only child. How we adored him. Tell me something about granddad. Your granddad supported me and your father with bookkeeping. Oh, I'll tell you what, though. He hated every minute of it. Didn't really like bookkeeping one bit. Maybe that was why he had the worst luck with jobs. Oh, the nights he'd come home afraid to tell me he lost another. And I'd tell him it didn't matter to me, but he felt ashamed, Gabriel. Tell me something about granddad. Harrison was only 36 when he died. Your father was eight years old at the time. Your granddad was hit by a streetcar in the business district. It took me nearly a year to believe he was really gone. I'm sorry, Gran. Oh, I know you are, dear. Damn. Tell me something about... Did you know that your granddad was a poet? He was. He wrote the most beautiful poetry for me when we were courting. I always thought he should have done something with that gift, but he was such a practical man. Didn't believe in chasing after dreams. Tell me about my father. Philip suffered from terrible nightmares, just like your granddad did. Oh, they were two peas in a pod. Tell me about my father. When Philip met your mother, Oh, it was love at first sight. They were married two weeks later. Never looked at a girl seriously until then, and he looked at plenty. You have your father's way with women, Gabriel. And your granddad's. <laughs> Tell me about my father. I wanted to just lay down and die when he and your mother were killed in that car crash when you were only eight. It was the thought of taking care of you that kept me going, Gabriel. The police say your father swerved off the road after being frightened by something. Perhaps a deer in the road, or, or a wildcat. It's interesting, you can see... I mean, I didn't pick up on this as a kid playing it, but... Um, Gabriel's troubles with women and a lot of the behavior that he shows comes from, you know that void of not having parents and um you know not having that guidance in life also it's interesting that his granddad and his dad were both killed when their son was eight and it was both uh car accidents so that's worth noting tell me about my father your granddad wanted philip to have a normal life he was obsessed by that thought he pushed Philip to go to law school, but Philip was driven to art. He painted almost in a daze. He would get so inside himself when he worked. Tell me about my father. 
He always hated that it was Margaret's money that supported the three of you when his painting couldn't. I kept telling him, try something more cheerful, like a landscape or two, but he couldn't do it. His work was just too dark and disturbing for the public, you know. Tell me about my mother. Your mother was Margaret Templeton when your father met her. She came from a very wealthy Creole family in New Orleans. She was beautiful and reckless. She was madly in love with your father, of course, but I also think she liked to find her family. Since you're so interested in family history these days, why don't you go by St. Louis Cemetery Number 1 and visit the family tomb? It would be such a sweet gesture. It's just past the Ross tomb, right? Oh, maybe I will. All right, more graveyard fun. Tell me about my mother. Your mother's family refused to give her money after the marriage. All she had left was a modest trust fund from her great aunt, who happened to like Philip. The remainder of your mother's trust fund became yours when she died. That's what you used to open your bookshop. Tell me about my mother. The Templetons are all gone now. Every last one of them. Oh, they never wanted anything to do with us, of course. What a waste. You know, you get prettier every time I see you. Oh, you. Oh, nothing. Never mind. All right, dear. All right, time to go get those things from the attic. I'm gonna go up to the attic, Grant. Be careful of the dust. All right, here we are up in the attic, and next time on Game Grumps, we'll uh, we'll explore this place. I hope everyone's enjoying um, this playthrough. I know it's very relaxed, but. Uh, that's kind of what I love about this game, and um, we're making some good progress. You can see we've got 126 points out of 362, so even if we're missing stuff, you can tell we're almost halfway through the game. So, all right, I will catch you later, and uh, hooray, you're wonderful. Bye. It's sushi time.